Earlier this year, Indian government announced a big change in the union budget of 2023. They announced that going forward, anybody who transfers money out of India would need to pay 20% tax on every single penny. So in this video, we'll be discussing exactly about that. Hello everybody, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and in this video we are going to talk in detail about this 20% tax deduction on the foreign remittances from India. So if you're an NRI or if family members live abroad, this video is very important for you because we are going to talk in detail about this 20% tax deduction by the Indian government. We'll talk about when this new rule is going to get implemented, there's not much time left. We'll talk about the exemptions. With the help of examples, we'll try to make it very simple to understand it for you. We'll discuss if this rule actually applies for the NRIs or not. We'll discuss about different scenarios in detail. If you have to send money for your children who are studying abroad, maybe for medical expenses, maybe you want to book a foreign travel trip or buy US stocks, or maybe you have to send money abroad to your children who want to buy property over there. So we'll talk about all these different scenarios in this video and also most importantly we'll also talk about if you can actually get a refund of this big amount of money that you would pay as a tax. We'll talk about that in this video so don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Okay, before I talk about the 20% tax in detail, I would need to give you a little background of this Indian taxation system. How does it actually work with foreign remittances? So back in 2004, RBI announced Liberalized Remittance Scheme or LRS under which resident individuals of India were allowed to transfer money abroad. The limit back in 2004 was 25,000 US dollars. In 2007, it was raised to 50,000 US dollars and later in 2013, it was raised to 250,000 US dollars. This limit, which was changed in 2013, stands true today as well. And this comes to around 2 crore rupees per financial year. So over a period of time, Indian IT department actually saw a big gap between people showing their taxable income and the amount of money that they were actually remitting outside of India. To combat the tax avoidance, under the LRS scheme, Indian government announced that there would be a tax collected at source when people actually transfer money out of India. So tax collected at source or TCS was provisioned under the Liberalized Remittance Scheme or LRS and we'll talk a lot about these two particular acronyms going forward in this video. So I hope that you have the background on it by now. Okay, so back in 2020, Indian government announced that anyone who wants to send money abroad for any purpose would need to pay a certain amount of tax. This tax was very low earlier and now this has been raised to a very high number. We're going to talk about that in detail now. So we'll talk about the particular scenarios but let's just try to understand what's the difference now. Earlier there was a threshold of 7 lakh Indian rupees. So currently if you have to send any money out of India then you would not need to pay any tax until 7 lakh rupees. So that is the threshold of 7 lakh rupees, but above 7 lakh, you would need to pay 5% tax. So for example, if your child is actually studying outside and you want to send him some money, let's say 10 lakh rupees. In that case, earlier in the first 7 lakh rupees, you would not need to pay any taxes. And in the last 3 lakh rupees, you would need to pay 5% tax, which would mean you would pay 5% of 3 lakh which is 15,000 rupees as tax to the Indian government. But now the Indian government has made two big changes in the provision of these taxes. Number one, the threshold limit has been removed and number two, that the rate has been increased from 5% up to 20%. So now what would be the case? If you have to send 10 lakh rupees, earlier you were only paying 15,000 taxes but now you would need to pay 2 lakh rupees as taxes. Yes, you got that absolutely right. So the threshold limit of 7 lakh rupees has been removed, which means you would need to pay taxes on those 7 lakh rupees as well. And of course, on the later 3 lakh as well. So on the complete 10 lakhs, you would need to pay 20% tax, which comes out to 2 lakh rupees. Okay, now the big question, from when this rule would be applicable? So this rule will be applicable from 1st of July 2023. So only a couple of weeks actually left 
if you can take benefit of this time, you would actually be able to save a lot of hassles for you. And of course, it would be very beneficial. You can just get away with the 5% taxes and you don't have to pay the heavy tax of 20%. Okay, now big question might be coming into your mind that is this actually applicable for all the scenarios? Are there any exemptions? So yes, there are two exemptions, which is for the education, the tuition fees and for the medical expenses. So let's just talk about the first scenario, which is money sent for the purpose of education. Mind it, this exemption that I'm going to talk about is only for the tuition fee. So of course, there are many other expenses like accommodation, transport, recreation, or maybe of course, fooding and lodging, all those things. If you're sending money for that, this exemption won't be applicable and you would need to pay 20% tax for those purposes. So as I said, this is an exemption, which means there's no change in the position, which means that if you actually send money less than seven lakh rupees, then you won't need to pay any tax. But if you haven't taken the education loan, then you would need to pay 5% taxes above that threshold of seven lakh rupees. And there's no change in this tax slab, which means that you would still need to pay same tax even after 1st of July, 2023. Let's talk about the second exemption, which is about the medical expenses. So if you send money until 7 lakhs, you don't have to pay any tax and above 7 lakhs, you would need to pay 5% tax. So the early example that I gave you about uh, 10 lakh rupees, you would still need to pay 15,000 tax if you're sending 10 lakh for medical expenses. So because this category is also exempt, the 20% tax won't be applicable here as well. Okay, so those were some of the exemptions, but everything else would come under the 20% tax umbrella. So what everything else I'm talking about? Literally anything that you can think of. Maybe you want to book a foreign trip, an overseas tour package. In that case, if you book your tour package until 30th of June, then you need to pay 5% tax because there's zero threshold in this category. But from 1st of July onwards, the tax collected at source would be 20%, which means that if you book a travel package of 5 lakh rupees, in that case, you need to pay 1 lakh rupees as taxes, while until 30th of June, you would need to pay only 25,000 rupees. Okay, that was about the travel plans, the tour packages, but for everything else, Maybe you have to get the shares in US. Maybe you have to purchase some bonds. Maybe you want to get some money from your parents for buying a property. Maybe you are a parent and your children are studying abroad. You have to send them some money as a gift for their accommodation, fooding, travel and other expenses. Or for any other category, you would need to pay 20% tax. The threshold has been removed and also the tax rate is now 20% instead of 5%. So yes, if you want to save all those hassles, transfer that money before 30th of June, because after that, you would need to pay this 20% tax. Okay, now when we know about the TCS or the tax collected at source, let's try to understand if this would be applicable for the NRIs as well. So when we talk about NRIs, we mean non-resident Indians. Now this TCS or tax collected at source, as I told you earlier in the video, is provisioned under the LRS scheme, which is not for NRIs. So this LRS scheme is only for resident Indians, which means NRIs, if you want to use your NRO account for transferring money to your foreign accounts, then you won't need to pay uh, the 20% tax. Actually for NRIs, if you want to send money from uh, your NRO accounts, in that case, there's a different scheme, which is named as $1 million scheme. So maybe we'll talk about that in a later video, but at least for this video, I can confirm that NRIs would be impacted by this 20% tax collected at source. So at least a big sigh of relief. Okay, now for all those resident Indians who want to send money abroad, let's talk about how can you save this 20% uh, amount or 20% tax. There's actually no way of saving it to be very frank, but yes, you can get it as a tax credit the next year. So that's the big relief actually, which means that Indian government would actually be taking that 20% tax and keeping it with them, but then you can get that refund back when you uh, file your ITR next year. So what am I actually talking about? So this is of course a big relief, uh, but then there's a pro and then there's a con. So of course the pro is that you can get that tax that you paid earlier back as a credit next year. 
but then why is the government even taking it? So now here we are calling it as TCS, which is tax collected at source, but you would also remember a very important term TDS, which is tax deducted at source. So the two concepts are actually very similar. Now, when you get your salaries on a monthly basis, then your employer might be deducting the tax in advance. So actually the same concept applies over here as well. That government is not saying that you need to give 20% tax to them, but then they feel that you owe them this tax. And if you don't owe them this tax, then you can actually get it as a return the next year. So that's a big relief, of course. But of course, the con is that your money would get stuck for next few months, right? So let's say you are an NRI living here in Canada and you want to get a property for yourself. So in that case, maybe you want some financial help from your parents back in India. Maybe you have some saving and you want them to send around 20 lakh rupees for you. But then the money that will reach you would only be a Canadian dollar equivalent of 16 lakh Indian rupees. So that's a cash flow problem that many people would actually face because eventually their parents would may be able to get the 4 lakh rupees next year in the uh, during the ITR. But then now at this time when their children actually need those 4 lakh uh, rupees converted into the Canadian dollars, they would need to send more money. So that's a cash flow problem that you will certainly face. So maybe if you need the Canadian dollar equivalent of 20 lakh rupees, your father need to send 25 lakh rupees from India, you'll receive only 20 lakh and then 5 lakh rupees maybe he can get as a uh, refund or a credit next year during the ITR. Of course, during that one year time or maybe a few months time, depending on when you actually transfer it, your money would be blocked. But yes, it is still a big relief. I hope that I have actually made this uh, you know, myth or the misconception actually very clear that this tax can be claimed as a credit or a return next year. So guys, there's nothing to panic about, but still you need to manage your finances very well. So guys, if you have family, relatives or friends living outside of India, anywhere in the world, please forward this video to them so that they can actually get to know the details of this 20% tax on foreign remittance. This is very important. Of course, many people actually need that kind of help back from home, back from India, when they need some help from their parents or some friends or relatives. And of course, they need to know about this. So please share this video with your family or friends who are living outside India and that would certainly help them. Guys, your likes and comments actually help promote the video a lot. So please do that. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And of course, do not forget to click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.